Aloha. Welcome to Wizard of Wellbeing, Wizard of Wellness. I'm Reverend Dr. Glenn Swartout, and uh, I guess I am the Wizard of Wellness. Uh, I've been working with healing and uh, health care for over 30 years, and, <clears throat> and I've developed a model called the Clinical Theory of Everything uh, that helps to explain some of the amazing, you know, seemingly miraculous or, you know, some people might think magical uh, healings that, that we've experienced over the years. But uh, really, uh, everything that we, that we experience in life, no matter how uh, out of the ordinary, out of the normal uh, that experience is, is ultimately understandable as long as we continue to uh, keep our mind open and observe how the universe works. Uh, as they say, God works in mysterious ways. So there's mystery in this world, and, and I'm sure always will be, because you know we're, we're, we're finite creatures trying to understand an infinite creator and creation. So uh, again, keep our minds open. Uh, we cannot really fully understand uh, the extent to which uh, we can heal ourselves unless we try. And that's been my philosophy throughout the years. Uh, started uh, as a doctor of optometry and working with uh, things like cataract where we were taught in school to just uh, watch and let it get ripe and then refer it for surgery. And, you know, there's nothing really you can do to slow it down or prevent it or reverse it. And, and I started... Uh, looking into, you know, into that claim uh, more deeply and found, well, there are many, many things that we do know about the lens of the eye, the crystalline lens. We know it's one of the most highly associated uh, with longevity. So if we could indeed find, find things, factors that could make the, the lens stay clearer longer, not only could we help to uh, prevent the number one surgery in, in Medicare of cataract surgery, uh, by keeping the eyes healthy and functioning uh, longer. But at that time, the statistics were that after surgery, the average person only lived five years, which means, you know, again, there's a high high association between the clarity of the lens and longevity. So if we can get, get the lens healthier and clearer and to stay that way, we're probably extending the lifespan of that person as well. So uh, again, that was 30 years ago, and uh, won awards for you know among other things the research that, that we first showed that that just beginning to intervene with the risk factors, things like eating sugar and you know, carbonated beverages and uh, drinking coffee and you know certain certain things that that uh, we felt were associated based on on the research. Uh, epidemiology and all, uh, and nutritional theories and, and observations, uh, we were able to actually show that, that, people, that, that most people could improve their vision, not only, not only stabilize, not only slow down and, and prevent the cataract from forming, but actually heal, heal the, the problem, even though this is a degenerative disease. So, you know, whatever the condition is, uh, we know there are cases of healing, you know, in, 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 in cancer, uh, there's over 3,000 cases in the medical literature of, of spont what they call spontaneous remission. Again, there, I, I, I look at that and say, hmm, spontaneous begs the question of what caused it. The, nothing is without a cause. Uh, so uh, what is the cause? Let's find the causes. Probably multifactorial, or we would have found the one cause already. Uh, and, and so in, in our other uh, websites and, and uh, 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 programs and, and uh, products that have formulated, other services that are available that are or, or oriented around this uh, clinical theory of everything that I mentioned, uh, we can help you understand that, understand the, what we call the five phases of health, how the body can get itself out of a low energy state where there's chronic degenerative disease and cancer, uh, where the terrain exists for that. It's just like the same, it's the same terrain actually that uh, can grow viruses. You know, a virus can't grow in any old Petri dish. You need a very, very specialized Petri dish to grow viruses. It's hard to grow them actually. You need attenuated cells, you need low energy. So the five phases of health model, five phases of disease model, describes that, what we call the terrain that is needed to grow any given disease. And it's very different terrain 
for you know growing uh, heart attacks than for growing uh, atherosclerosis. You know they're 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 opposite. Uh, so uh, it's important to begin to understand this is your roadmap for healing. What I call accelerated self healing when we begin to actually communicate with the body in real time on its level you know the, the the subconscious information processing in the body is over a million times more rich in information than the conscious information so you know we're used to a medical system where you know there's a few questions on a questionnaire and we answer verbally and that's you know a very limited amount of information that we have and then we do a few tests that are chemical based tests and there's you know while there's many, many, many thousands of chemicals in the body we're testing, you know, maybe a couple dozen chemicals on, on chemistry tests. So it, we're, it's like we're cherry picking a couple things and thinking that we understand what's going on, but you know, we're very unique, we're individual, we're, we're not <clears throat> the same as the rest of the population. So population medicine breaks down, uh, especially when we begin to try to treat with, with damage, with toxins, what we call pharmaceutical drugs with surgery, with radiation, chemotherapy. And these are all, all toxins that actually cause disease. Side effects are a new disease. That's why it's called allopathic medicine. It means a new disease. It's the actual name for that form of medicine that uh, has achieved a, a uh, not only a dominant status, but a, a monopoly status enforced by a mo monopoly concept of governance where the real, the true governance in, in life is by each sovereign being. Your body is sovereign. It governs itself. There's no, I cannot govern your body. You, no one else can govern your body the way you can. And that involves not only the biological intelligence, the subconscious information processing of a million fold more than your mind, but also your mind as well, which is part of your spirit, part of your soul. So it's a, it's a coordination, cooperation between the soul and the body. Uh, and, and we see that in the placebo effect studies where the placebo effect is half the power of any drug. That's the soul. Uh, the, the, the power uh, you know, of, of morphine, well, half of that power to relieve pain is the placebo effect. It, the placebo effect doesn't mean that it's a non-effect. It's a, it's a powerful effect, just as powerful as any physical medicine. So we need to have these working together to use physical medicines like herbs and nutrients that are, have been in our biological environment for you know, eons, for however long this body has been here on Earth, evolving the genetic uh, material form of it, uh, it's designed by its survival in that environment to respond to the normal stimuli in that environment, the normal chemistries and energies. So we can communicate again with that int that uh, intelligence, that native intelligence of the body and, s and soul uh, through the energetics. They both are energetic in function. That's how they cooperate and coordinate with each other. We can wiretap into that. It's a non-local effect that we can can uh, tie into. So that's how we're able to test test you at a distance. Uh, and you can see in our contacts section, uh, you can get in touch uh, on on that if you'd like to have uh, uh, a scan, a reading of what your body is doing, what your body and soul are doing right now to heal you, rather than. You know, someone thinking with their logical mind, uh, left brain, you know, book learning uh, and a couple of tests saying, a couple of chemical tests, chemical levels saying, well, this level is too high and that one's too low, so we're going to force them into the normal range. Well, you can do that, but it doesn't mean you're healthier. Even if the, those numbers become more normal in a statistical sense, it doesn't mean that your health has become more normal in a optimum sense. <laughs> you know, these are different concepts. There's a study in, in England, and this is a rare thing to study, but they studied the, the actual health of the person, not just the numbers, in a, a blood pressure study. And of course, all the doctors agreed that the patients were healthier on their standard, which was based on the numbers. The systolic and diastolic numbers were closer to the mean of the population, therefore the person was better. Better, right? It's better. But the people, the patients, their families, and the, the, the ministers and priests and other people in the, in the, in the community also were surveyed and they all agreed with each other and not with the doctors they they totally were at odds with the doctor's conclusion they all felt that this person on their observation was less well 
So wellness is a different thing than disease or lack of disease. Treating disease with, with pharmaceuticals and surgery is not the same thing as restoring, rebuilding our wellness. Uh, and uh, look forward to working with you. I hope you join me.